Hello and welcome back to part two of this tutorial on implementing RAG with Amazon Bedrock and Titan. So in this part, we'll take a closer look at the data set and then turn them, turn the entries of this data set into a set of word embeddings and store them in open search serverless for performing similarity search. So this is the data set. Uh, you can download this from Kaggle. I'll leave the link in the comment section. This is a pretty small file, uh, just about 200 KB. And uh, this actually has data that has the year followed by the nomination, uh, the name of the nominee and the film's title and uh, true or false whether the entry is a winner or not. So it looks something like this. Now, this is a perfect data set. Uh, because it is very clean, it is very well structured and we are going to follow certain steps to convert this into word embeddings and perform similarity search to retrieve context for our chatbot. So let's switch to the Jupyter Notebook and get started with the steps. So again, we'll get started by importing the modules, the Python modules. Uh, Obviously, the open search Python client, Bodo3, Pandas, and then we'll uh, initialize the bedrock client because we are going to invoke the Titan embeddings endpoint, uh, or rather the bedrock endpoint targeting the Titan embeddings model. So uh, once that is done, so we'll replace the host with the value from the console. This is going to be the endpoint for the open search serverless collection or rather the instance. And we'll initialize the uh, open search client. So once that is done, it's time to load the data set. So I have already shown you the CSV file, which looks something like this. Now we are going to load that into the pandas data frame and we'll do a little bit of a cleanup. Uh, so, because the data set is large, not really massive, but large enough, we want to filter the year to 2023. We don't want to, we don't want the bot to answer anything beyond 2023. Um, so, we will confine it to 2023 and then uh, we're also dropping the uh, empty rows where the film is set to none. Uh, so that is the next thing. And then we are making sure that everything is converted into lowercase. And at this point, if you are curious, our data set, uh, our data frame would look something like this. So the category is lowercase. We got rid of all the blank rows and uh, the year is confined to 2023. The year of release is 2022. Uh, the ceremony was held in 2023. So that's what we have done in this step. Then we are going to do something very interesting. So we are going to basically take all the text columns and concatenate them to create entries that will actually say, so-and-so got nominated under the category for the film to win the award. In case they didn't, we'll actually say got nominated under the category for the film, but did not win. So we are now converting all the columns or concatenating all the columns to create one, uh, one new column called the text that actually looks like this. Now, Austin Butler got nominated under the category of actor in a leading role, but did not win because the winner is false. So this is the most important column that we are going to uh, use for our chatbot. And, and this is what we are going to use to turn into word embeddings. So the next step is to define a function that takes input text and converts that into a word embedding. So I define a function called text embedding and then uh, I'm pointing to the Titan ELT, uh, E1T medium, uh, not ELT, E1T medium. And we are invoking this to convert the input text into an embedding. So we'll define that function and then we're going to define a Lambda 
function here, not AWS Lambda, but a Python Lambda function that basically iterates over every row of the data frame and calls text embedding on the column text. So now we are uh, creating a new column within the data frame called embedding that actually has the word embeddings for the text column that we generated in the previous step. Now this is going to take uh, a couple of minutes. So let's wait for this to get finished. Okay, so now the data frame has a new column uh, that has the word embeddings. There we go. So now we have two new columns added to the data frame. One is the text column, the other one is the embeddings column. So we are going to now take the text column and the embeddings column and add it to the to the uh, elastic search no not elastic search but open search serverless vector database so we define a function called add document that accepts a vector and the text and then populates the nominee vector and nominee text that we defined in the index uh, to to basically map uh, those two with the uh, nominee uh, the, the the nomination and the uh, text the vector equivalent of that within the document so i'm not going to invoke this because i've already ingested the uh, data so this is going to uh, repeat the steps so I, I i want to skip this it's already in place and now what we can do is we can test whether we are able to retrieve the data by invoking a semantic search a similarity search so I define a function called search the index, which is the Oscar index based on a vector. So we are going to send a vector and this is going to get back to us with 15 entries and we exclude the nominee vector property because that contains the embeddings and it is not a good use of bandwidth. We don't really care about the vector. We only care about the text. Uh, that's what is going to be used for our uh, uh, rag. So we are going to exclude the vector. We don't really care about it. And then we are creating a KNN query uh, with the nominee vector as the target field or the property. Vector is what we are sending as the input vector. And the K uh, factor here is 15. Uh, these two need to match because the size is uh, going to be based on the number of entries that are going to be returned by the KNN search. So we define this and then uh, we invoke the client and send the response back. So now what we're going to do is we'll test this query, or we'll test this semantic search capability by asking a few questions. So who won the award for the best music? Now, when we run this, the first step is to take this query and convert that into a vector. So how does that look like? So when we invoke this and turn this into a vector, it looks something like this. And if you look at the length, it is 4096. That means uh, when you actually convert a chunk of text into Titan embeddings, this is the size of the vector. So we now converted our query to a vector. And uh, the next step is to perform an, a search on the index by sending that vector. So now we have vectorized our query and sending that to the function that actually performs the similarity search. So let's run this and see what happens. Right. So uh, now when we print the data, it actually comes back with pretty interesting output. So there is nominee text and someone got nominated under the category music original score for the film, so on so, and the score is this. Now it starts with almost 70 and since we asked for 15 entries, it comes back with 15 uh, 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 results. But 
we are most interested in this. So from all these nominations, there is only one winner. And when we ask the bot, it has to basically extract this. So now this is the most important step in performing or implementing RAG because we took a data set and converted or, or rather we took a data set, created the textual representation of the fields, turned that into a set of vectors, ingested that into a vector database, which is Amazon Open Search Serverless Vector Database, and then performed a similarity search. Now imagine extracting all the entries from nominee text, creating a paragraph, sending that to the chatbot, and then asking who won the a best music award, it can simply comprehend the answer from this data. That's exactly what is called the retrieval augmented generation. So we are retrieving the context from an external source, which is the vector database, and feeding the context to the LLM. So this is part two. In the next part, we'll implement the final step where we take this data and turn that into an augmented context for the prompt that we are going to send to the LLM. Stay tuned.